Hi guys, now we're on to theorem 7a and its converse 7b. Now, just like theorem 6, the proofs of these two theorems are not examinable. So we just have to know what they say. So let's see what theorem 7a says. Theorem 7a says if you have a tangent to a circle. Now what's a tangent? A tangent is a line that touches the circle only once. So this theorem says any tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. Now perpendicular means it's 90 degrees to the radius at the point of contact. So basically what that is saying is if you're given a tangent, the tangent touches the radius at 90 degrees. So basically what it's saying is that both of those angles at A are 90 degrees. So if TAN is a tangent, then OA is perpendicular to TA, and that's upside down T is the symbol for perpendicular. Now if we ever need to use this, the reason we're going to use to explain why this angle is 90 is that a tangent is perpendicular to a radius. So we write tan, and then the symbol for perpendicular, and then rad for radius. So let's look at an example. It says O is the center of the circle. Now as soon as I see the word center, I start thinking theorem 1, 2, and 3, and I start thinking about radii. So immediately I know that OA and OT are equal. Now that may or may not be useful. Then it says I have tangents. Now what you're going to notice is that theorem 7, 8, and 9 are about tangents. So immediately I start thinking about 7, 8, and 9 when I see the word tangents. So PT is a tangent and PA is a tangent. Now as soon as I've drawn that, I see that these two tangents touch the circle at the radius, which means that I have a 90 degree at A and a 90 degree at T, because that's exactly what theorem 7A just told us. Now this question is getting us to try and prove this is a cyclic quad. Now let's refresh our memory. There's three ways to prove something is a cyclic quad. Number one is what I affectionately call butterfly angles. So that was theorem 4b. If you can prove that you have angles in the same segment to equal, then this is a cyclic quad. Now I don't even see that shape there, that butterfly shape that's needed for that. I don't see that here. So this is probably not applicable in this case. Second way to prove something is a cyclic quad is that the opposite angles add to 180 degrees. That was theorem 5b. And the third way is exterior angle equals interior opposite angle. If we can prove that, then our quad is cyclic. Now that was theorem 6b. Now from what I've already filled in on my diagram, what I've figured out, I can immediately see that reason number two is what I'm going to go for here. I can prove that these two angles, A and T, add to 180 degrees. So why was that 90? I need to explain that. Angle OAP equals 90 degrees because my tangent is always perpendicular to my radius. So that's theorem 7A in action. Now I need to explain where the other 90 degrees come from. And it's exactly the same thing. OTP is 90 because my tangent is perpendicular to my radius. Now that's perfect, because that means that these two angles add to 180 degrees. Well, that means that OA, PT is a cyclic quad. And my reason? Because I've just proved that my opposite angles are supplementary. So let's have a look at theorem 7b. And again, the proof of this is not examinable. Now this is a very strange theorem. The number of times that this theorem comes up is quite rare. This theorem is about proving that a random line is in fact a tangent to the circle. So this is in fact the converse of theorem 7a because it says if you're given a random line, so you're not given a tangent, you're given any line that is perpendicular, so it's 90 degrees to the radius, at the point where the radius meets the circle, then this line must be a tangent. So it's exactly the opposite. You're given the 90 degrees, so this means that you can assume the line is a tangent. So in this example, LNE would be a tangent because you're given that it's perpendicular. Now if you ever use this theorem to prove that a line is a tangent, the reason is going to be because the line is perpendicular to the radius. 
Now, we don't even have an example of 7b because it's really quite an obscure theorem that really doesn't come up much. So you might see it once or twice in our mixed examples at the end of the section.